Scott Mann and welcome to Galveston, Texas. A very popular tourist destination located right on the Gulf of Mexico, only about maybe an hour away from Houston. It's a beautiful but chilly morning here. We're, we're located here in the Strand Historic District and just gotta love the beautiful historic architecture in here. Galveston was named after Bernardo de Galvez and back in the 19th century, at one time, it was the largest city in Texas and the largest seaport west of New Orleans. But unfortunately, on September 8, 1900, the infamous 1900 Galveston hurricane devastated Galveston, where about a third of the city was destroyed and around 6,000 people were killed from the hurricane. And I believe it is the deadliest hurricane in U.S. history. But since then, although it's nowhere close to being the largest city in Texas anymore, but it's still a very popular tourist destination with a lot of great history and a lot of cool things to check out here. And right where we started this video, we're at the corner of Strand and Kepner, which is also 22nd Street. This corner is very significant because this is where the holiday Juneteenth officially started. Back at, at the very beginning of 1863, President Abraham Lincoln declared that that all basically that all that all slaves in all states shall be free. And of course, that was during the American Civil War at the time. When the when the war ended in 1865, word still hadn't got out here in Texas that that slaves were to be set free. So so it was read by generals here. On June 19th, 1865, General Order Number Three, declaring that all slaves shall be free, and we celebrate Juneteenth to this day on June 19th. And it was first started as Black Americans get to celebrate by parades, singing, and dancing, as it was their Emancipation Day and it was declared a holiday in 1979 in the state of Texas. And even to this day, it's being declared as a state holiday in many other states, even in my home state of Michigan. And at the western end of the Strand is the Galveston Railroad Museum. It opened up in 1983 as a museum, and the depot itself opened back in 1932 as the headquarters for the Gulf, Colorado, and Santa Fe Railroads. And, and at the museum too, there are about five, eight, eight, five acres of trains and about 40 rolling stock of locomotives, freight cars, passenger cars, and cabooses. So let's go check it out. I say the, the railroad museum was really cool, but yeah, the lobby of the depot looked a lot different compared to when I was here when I was a kid. But I did I did read that a lot of the artifacts inside did get damp. A lot of it got damaged from 
think Hurricane Ike back in 2008. If not Ike, maybe Harvey in 2017. This is the Galveston Historic Seaport, home to the 1877 tall ship Alyssa. It is a square iron rigged bark. It was brought over from, from Greece, or, or from a shipyard, a shipyard in Greece back in 1978. And is only one of three ships of, of its kind which still can go out and sail today. Unfortunately, it's closed on Mondays, which is the day I'm filming this. But yeah, I. I when I was a kid, I remember boarding the ship, which was, it was really cool, I have to say. All right, so coming up next, I should probably go get some lunch because after checking out some cool sights around the Strand and throughout Galveston, I need to get something to eat, maybe some seafood. Okay, just uh, it's about several blocks south of the Railroad Museum. We're putting up shrimp and stuff downtown. All right, so they're open after all, which is great news because I can't wait to get some seafood here. I'd order their fried shrimp, should be right from the Gulf. Because, again, the Gulf of Mexico is just offshore here. It's got shrimp, some fries, coleslaw, even some hush puppies too. Okay, we gotta eat some of the Scott Man Classic first. That's what I call coleslaw. Mmm, mmm. Nice and creamy and delicious. But not too overwhelming. Very good. All right, got one of their hush puppies. Mm. Bright it perfectly. Fries are nice and warm, although these fries probably need a little bit of ketchup, though. Milk for is the reason why I came here. The shrimp. Got some cocktail sauce and also tartar sauce. These are breaded to perfection. Ugh, so good. It's like, I only get shrimp when I'm along the coast. That's where, that's where it tends to be a little bit more fresh compared to if you get shrimp in Michigan, where it's shipped across the country. <laughs> yeah, very good. All right, so I'm gonna check out some other things around Galveston. There's some really beautiful historic mansions. So I'm gonna go for a little drive around town, and then we'll head over to Pelican Island next. Just a few blocks south of where I ate, this is the Moody Mansion located along Broadway. The Moody Mansion was built back in 1895 and was purchased by W.L. Moody after the 1900 hurricane and the Moody family lived in it for over 80 years. And today you can go inside there and take a self-guided tour and, and take a tour around this beautiful mansion. Broadway again and over here this is probably the most famous building in all of Galveston this is the 1892 Bishop's Palace this is originally the home of Josephine and Walter Gresham and what a beauty this mansion is
Okay, next to the 1892 Bishop's Palace is the beautiful Sacred Heart Catholic Church. Off to Pelican Island. end of Pelican Island, which is just to the north of the main island of Galveston. And what's cool here is you got picnic areas, a playground, there's even an area where you can do some fishing. But what's cool is that you have the marine park too, where you got you got a World War II submarine, the USS Cavella, right behind us. And then, probably can't see it from where we are right now, but also there is a a destroyer called the USS Stewart. It's one of three of its kind. So we're, we're, let's go check it out. So this is the USS Cavella, aka the Lucky Lady, also known as the Avenger of Pearl Harbor. It, it was commissioned back on February 29, 1944. And what's cool about this is that it sank the Japanese Navy carrier Shokaku, which was the same carrier which attacked Pearl Harbor back on December 7, 1941. So this submarine is a hero for, for us Americans. And this is the USS Stewart, which was commissioned on May 31st, 1943. It's conducted over 30 missions in the North Atlantic and saved over 15 merchant sailors when two freighters collided. Unfortunately, my microphone failed on me for the rest of the day, so voiceover Scott Mabel will take over from here. Seawolf Park was really cool to see. It is definitely a highlight here in Galveston. To conclude my visit to Galveston, I head over to the famous Seawall of Galveston. The Seawall is more than 10 miles long and 17 feet high, and it was constructed as a result of the deadly 1900 hurricane which devastated the city and killed several thousand people. The beach is a huge highlight here in Galveston and is a must visit. If you come in the winter on a weekday, it is not all that crowded. I've had such a wonderful time here in Galveston. On my next visit, I will need to go check out Moody Gardens, which is another top attraction here in Galveston. I hope you enjoyed watching my adventure here in Galveston, Texas. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click that subscribe button to come along and join me for the adventure. And be sure to click that notification bell so that you know when a new video goes live. Well, thank you for watching, and this is Scott, or the Scott Man, signing out.